I, I feel a little bit like uh, this uh, psychiatrist in this uh, conference, great conference of psychiatry. He was the last one to talk. <laughs> and his theme, because he was an expert, was sex. And since everybody else had taken his time, he stood up and said, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a great pleasure, and sat down. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like doing the same thing. I, <laughs> it, it, took, it took a little bit for, to, to come in, right? It's okay, it's right. You heard already, thanks to my friend Cillian, about accelerations, about Sorry. wind, about uh, all of this stuff that all of us that practice high-rise buildings have to take into consideration. And, and to us, it's like routine stuff. Although, what I'm calling with routine, don't figure out ever that it's not difficult. I think that, uh, what, yes. I have to stand here? <laughs> I cannot move? No, you get feedback. Feedback from whom? <laughs> OK, turn this way, please. I think that uh, this type of buildings, this type of uh, very narrow and tall buildings are perhaps the best example of cooperation, of real cooperation between an architect and an engineer. Uh, in a regular building, they, they are architects that dare to try to set the structure for the building. And then, you know, we come and we change it, and not a big deal. But in these buildings, it's, it's the type of building that you start talking with the architect the moment that he starts thinking about the building. And that is what these buildings are all about. Uh, I, I really, I could say that we use 12,000, 10,000, 8,000 PSI concrete, what I want. Mm -hmm. I could say that the building is anchored by three inch enormous road to, to the soil. We, we fortunately had a good rock over here, but I won't because you already have heard a lot of this thing. Uh, I could tell you that there was a big, argument about the thickness of the wall that we impose to the architect where I want. <laughs> <laughs> I will. But what, <laughs> but what I, I want to say is that when one talks about Hong Kong and one talks about New York and one talks about this type of buildings, they are not the same. They are not the same because the conditions that we have to design the building for are different. Different wind, different seismic. We just finished uh, design development of a building, which two buildings, one next to another, which by themselves you can call it a narrow and tall building. They are 110 stories high. But they are in a zone where we can hit winds of 220 miles an hour. So. Then what happened is that the role of the, of the engineer is become very imposing to the architecture. It's, uh, and, and somehow, and this is why I always selected to teach in a school of architecture and not in a school of engineering, the imagination of the architect comes through and, and the building really works the way that it's supposed to work. This building, like the old two buildings that uh, were mentioned here, I think that are great examples of these type of buildings. Uh, in, in the three of them, you saw really, really the, the quality of engineering that had to go and the preoccupation that we engineers have to have with things like the movements of the buildings. But since the time is the time that it is, I'm not going to talk about it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>